Hi folks and welcome to chapter two of Inquiry Mindset, 10 reasons to use inquiry-based learning. Much like chapter one, chapter two calls on you to reflect on your current classroom before you read further into the book. We're gonna ask you to reflect on a few strengths, a few areas of inquiry-based learning that already exist in your classroom. And we're gonna ask you to be specific as to how you know these areas exist in your classroom. What's the evidence? What do you intentionally do to identify or nurture parts or all of these 10 areas of inquiry-based learning. Much like chapter one, we're also gonna ask you to identify a few areas that perhaps you'd like to focus on elevating or sharpening in your practice. It's gonna be those areas that enhance your growth throughout your reading of inquiry mindset. By identifying those areas for growth now, before we unpack the rest of the book, you're gonna be looking for ways to help you in these areas throughout the coming chapters and the coming weeks and months. As always, we're gonna ask you to identify these strengths and share them to our Inquiry Mindset community. Just like chapter one, we're also gonna ask you to go there and see what people are sharing and look for those areas that partner up and are, are creating synergies with the areas that you'd like to focus on growing. Together, that community is going to help us all grow our practice in an inspiring and collaborative way. I look forward to chiming in there, seeing what's being shared, uh, and offering some insight as to how we can all grow together from my experience as an inquiry teacher as well. Look forward to it, folks. Enjoy Chapter 2. Bye for now.